Moto Camping. Chances are if you own a dirt bike, dual sport, adventure bike, or a gold wing with knobbies, it's something you've thought about doing. For good reason. What other activity combines the wonders of combustion engines with the old-timey cowboy-esque adventure of loading your mount with everything you need and setting off after for unforgiving terrain, serene vistas, and peace and quiet? It's also a reason you might choose the 300 Rally over the regular 300L model. As with the larger fuel tank, better headlight, and improved weather protection, it's more suited for multi-day trips and adventures than short rips and tight single track. With the current fire conditions in BC, a backwoods camp is out of the question, but I was able to book a night at a provincial campground to at least test out some luggage carrying options on the rally. I haven't got a rack, saddlebags, or any way to carry the luggage other than a 20 liter mountain biking backpack and a couple of rock straps. I packed my backpack with the food, water, clothes, stove and other camping necessities, keeping the heavy objects as low and close to the center of my back as possible. This just left my sleeping system to fit on the bike. I placed down my microfiber hiking towel first to hopefully keep the plastics from getting scratched or dulled. Then I packed my hammock, mat, and sleeping bag on top. I attached the rock straps in a crisscross from the extra long bolts Honda puts on the seat and tail light. These are meant to attach a rack to. I tightened the straps until when I shook the luggage, the back of the bike moved, not the load. Then I tucked the straps safely away and headed off. This is where the public road is. Well, it ends. This isn't really getting too hot here. Good. While it's possible for me to get to the park by going on the highway around the mountain, I know a route that goes over the mountain on logging roads connected by a short jeep trail, but nothing tight or overgrown that would be risky in the current conditions. Not long onto the logging roads, I accidentally recorded a scene for a Ford commercial. The logging roads are incredibly dusty and sandy in this area, as they are actively logging higher up and the lack of rain and constant erosion from the loaded logging trucks has pummeled the road into a dust-making factory. Access to these logging roads is not restricted and you don't need a radio to be on them, but knowing that they are actively hauling, I was going slow and keeping well to the right of the road. Not long after passing the pickup truck, I came across a loaded logging truck. And if you think the Ford made a lot of dust, the logging truck made a whole dust storm. After feeling sorry for my lungs and air filter for the second time in 15 minutes, I set off again, keeping an eye out for the rest of the loggers. Soon I passed the point where the trucks are hauling from, and the surface of the road improved significantly. I was able to move on a little faster from here, and I eventually came to the start of the Jeep trip. Man, this clutch! Ah! One finger! So nice!
After crossing through the jeep trail, I descended the mountain on the other side. The luggage system worked very well by packing the heavy objects properly in my backpack and just putting the light, bulky stuff on the back of the bike. It did not affect the handling of the bike much at all. I felt comfortable and secure the whole ride. joined back up with the tarmac and arrived at my site unscathed, but with more of that famous ADV patina. But now the bike looks like uh, an ADV bike or a dual sport, not just like a street bike with big tires. This is great. You can see the whole bike shakes. Can I move it? Super solid. The camping towel helped keep the plastics from getting scratched, but a few still snuck through. I set up, slept the night, made a camping mocha, and packed up in 10 seconds. The ride home was uneventful, and I didn't run into any wannabe Travis Pastranas or Lincoln Log trucks. While it's a small setup, it held all the food, water, cooking supplies, clothes, and sleeping equipment I needed for two days and a night. I am certain a longer trip would be possible as I didn't pack the lightest or most space-saving items. With the rally's large fuel tank, I don't see a need to incorporate a jerry can or fuel bladder for longer trips. It also reminds me I don't need an $800 Moscow Moto 80 liter system to get out and explore. Plus you have the most fun traveling life. I hope to put a luggage rack on the back to mount my Pelican box that holds my drone and GoPro equipment and to prevent plastics from getting more scratched. But I want to keep the system lightweight so it can still enjoy the terrain. I gave the rally a good wash and cleaned and lubed the chain, which my GoPro decided was too sexy and censored. Well, no BDR route, this trip was a fun mix of tarmac, logging roads, and trail, and I'm confident this setup would definitely be adequate to attempt some days on Canada's only BDR route. Stay tuned if you're interested in that, as I hope to ride some of it later this season. Let me know if you've ridden any of the Okanagan BDR and what you use for camping. Until next time, ride safe, pack light, and watch out for logging trucks.